Ebonic for knowing the names of aldo, uh, aldo sugars, carbons three through six. So the starting compound that we all have to memorize is the three carbon aldose, which is glyceraldehyde. Okay, glyceraldehyde. Now this is actually the compound that Emil Fischer used in determining his convention for, uh, st uh, for stereoisomers. He said, take your highest numbered chiral carbon. In the case of glyceraldehyde, there's only one chiral carbon, right? Non-chiral, non-chiral, chiral. And if the OH is, and when you draw it in this Fischer projection, which remember Fischer projection means that these, that these lines have three dimensions. So the ones coming out of the horizontal ones are coming out towards you like a bow tie. The ones going up and down are going behind the plane of the board. The OH pointing to the right is uh, going to be called our D, glyceraldehyde. Pointing to the left becomes our L, glyceraldehyde. And my understanding is he just guessed which one was dextrorotary and which one was levorotary, and I think uh, experiment then showed later that he was right. But that's going to be your D, glyceraldehyde. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build up from this from three carbons to four carbons to five carbons to six carbons. And we're going to do it systematically so that you just have to remember the convention and, and the whole thing falls out. We're going to add a new carbon in this position right here, just above the, the uh, just below the, the, the aldehyde. And if we do that, because it's a new chiral carbon, there's two possibilities. One is that our new chiral carbon projects its OH group to the right. other is that it projects it to the left. Okay, so what did I just draw? I just drew the same compound we had before, the glyceraldehyde, the D-glyceraldehyde. But I added an extra sugar, or an extra carbon between the, uh, just below the um, aldehyde. And it has two possibilities. It can either project the OH to the right or it can project the OH to the left. These are both still D sugars because the highest numbered chiral carbon is still pointing to the right when the aldehyde is up on top. The Fischer projection convention still holds. These are bonds that are coming out toward you. And these up-down bonds are going back, 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 all the way up and down. These are called D erythros and D threeos. Okay. If I wanted to make the next set, which would be my, my pentoses, I'm going to need to just add another one here. And each one of these is going to branch into two possibilities. So that my five carbon sugars, and now I'm going to start drawing them a little simpler, will look like this. I think I've got enough room. Here's my aldehydes. Adding one more sugar on the top, so it has two or one more carbon on the top, so it can go to the right or to the left. Right to the left. This next carbon here, which was our carbon two before, is now our carbon three. The first two are going to be over here to the right. The next two are going to be over there. And then the next ones are all going to be our highest number of chiral carbons, which are going to be D. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just following a pattern. I'm starting with glyceraldehyde, I'm adding one carbon, and it's got two possibilities. Then I'm taking each one of these guys, and they are branching to add one more chiral carbon, one going to the right, one's going to the left, and these two are branching to add one more chiral carbon, one to the right, one to the left. I end up with every combination of aldopentose. There are four D aldopentoses, and their names are ribose, arabinose, lyxose, no, xylose, xy, that's, that's gonna that's going to be in your gums, and lyxos, and they're all the D sugars. Now, why am I only paying attention to the D sugars? If you understand your stereochemistry, you're going to 
this is going to be a moot point, but a lot of people get confused on this. If you've got a D sugar, the L version of it is simply the mirror image of the whole molecule. It doesn't mean simply move this guy over to that side. If I move this guy over to that side, I will have an L sugar, but it won't be L ribose. It will be L something else. In fact, it would be L uh, lyxose because it would be the mirror image of the whole of the lyxose. So don't just change one guy and say that that must be the L version of that sugar. But if you understand that convention, that, uh, to go from a D to an L means a mirror image of each of our pyrocarbons, then you, you don't have to memorize the L's. You can just memorize the D's. The D's are the more common uh, sugars that appear in nature. And so when we're all done, we're gonna, we're gonna split each of these because we're gonna go all the way to hexose. So we're gonna split each of these two more times to be able to give us eight possible. Uh, and now I'm not even gonna draw the aldehydes anymore. It's just too much. Or the, or the carbon sixes. I'm just gonna do these four. One, two, it's carbon two, three, four, and five. Carbon five is our highest number of chirocarbon. Uh, so it's always going to be the right. These are only the D aldohexoses now. So since they're only D, all of our carbon fives. So the bottom of these, I haven't drawn it in, but there will be a CH2OH. The tops of these will all have the aldehyde at the carbon one position. I'm not going to draw those anymore. Um, ribose, right? These were all to the right. We added one more chiral carbon, so it has two possibilities. It can either be to the right or it can be to the left. This guy was our arabinose. It went like this. So now its new one can either be over here or over there. I can give myself enough room. That's going to be a mess. Let me see if I can clean that up. Okay, and then this one is going to be um, uh, there. Every combination there is accounted for. And the names of the sugars are glucose, no, what am I talking about? It's not glucose, it's allose, altrose, glucose, mannose, gulose, idose, galactose, talose. All right, they're all D's. So, wanted the L for any of these sugars, you take the whole sugar, all four chirocarbons, and switch them. And you get the L altrose, the L glucose. Um, D. Okay. Now, so the first thing to do is to, is to pay attention, is to figure out what we just did. We started with glyceraldehyde, and then we kept branching it by adding one chiral carbon beneath the aldehyde carbon. And going first to the right, then to the left. Then we added to each of these, we branch them and add another one to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. And then we have to remember the names. Now I have a convention to be able to do this which uses your left hand. Everybody has to have a left hand. If you don't have a left hand, I'm sorry, you can do it in a mirror, maybe it doesn't work. But for D sugars, you use your left hand. You also have to have five fingers. And I know that's really unfair. I grew up up in Oregon where everybody does farming and, and, uh, and lumber and, and, and fishing and just you can't find anybody with ten fingers in, in a group. But, but I still have all my five fingers on my left hand. So we've got our, our hand's going to be pointed out in front of us to the left. The tips of our fingers are going to represent the OH groups, and our thumb is going to be the, carbon, uh, the, the aldehyde carbon at the top. So starting with, let's start with these uh, four carbon sugars. There's two chiral carbons. I'm going to use these two fingers to represent carbons two and three. And the, the uh, convention is going to be like this. My carbon two position is going to alternate between right and left. My highest number of chiral carbon stays right and the right. So I've really only got two options. I've got a erythrose and a threose. You gotta be careful that you don't do this on the, the bus that you get somebody to punch you. Um, so erythrose and a threose. If we move to five carbons, now I've got three chiral carbons. And I'm gonna go, the carbon two is gonna alternate right, left, right, left. The carbon three is gonna alternate every other one. Right, right, left, left. 
and the one on the bottom is going to stay the right. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm counting, I'm using my fingers to count up to four, where I really only have two positions. It's like a binary counting system. You go one, two, three, four. What just happened there? The, the first one, all of them are on the right, OH, OH, OH. This guy keeps alternating back and forth with each number that I count. This guy is alternating every other sugar. One, two, three, four. That way I hit all four combinations. And then I just have to remember some kind of mnemonic. My mnemonic for the two carbon sugars, we remember glyceraldehyde because it's the, it's the parent compound. My mnemonic for the um, two carbon sugars is erythrose threos is ET, like ET phone home. Okay, in the early 80s, we all went and watched that movie, everybody cried, it was wonderful. ET, erythros, threos. And remember, there's only two uh, car uh, carbons, and we're only keeping track of the Ds, so just erythros, threos, be careful where you do that one. And then we had the five carbon sugars. For this one, I pictured this little tiny dog that's got a really growly face with big teeth, and he's trying to like always bite everybody in the leg, and his name is Raxel. And you're like, slow down, Raxel, you're gonna get sued, okay? So it's Araxel stands for ribose, arabinose, xylose, lysose. I'm sorry that was a bad mnemonic, but it's worked for me for years. Araxel has three chiral carbons, because there's five total carbons, and we're gonna count to four. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. Ribose, araxo, arabinose, xylose, lysose. Which then allows us to be able to use all five of our fingers, or at least the four of, of these fingers, to be able to keep track of our four chiral carbons for the eight potential um, uh, sugars of, of the, uh, the albos, albohexoses. So we'll start with all four of them going this way. Now you're going to need to practice. This takes a little bit of finger dexterity. That top finger is going to alternate every single one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next one is going to alternate every other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This next finger, third finger, ring finger, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the last one just stays to the right because we're only keeping track of the D sugars because the L's are just the mirror images. So it's gonna, we've got to put it all together. This is going to take a little practice, but it's, if you think about it, it's not that bad. We're going to go one, two. Now this guy's gone as far as it can, so it's going to go back, but this one's going to go three, four. Both of these have gone as far as they can. So five, six, seven, eight. If you, if you dissect that, this guy just went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this guy went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's not as hard as it looks. Keep practicing. And the mnemonic that goes with this goes like this. Point over here. All altruists gloomily, gloomily manufacture Ghoul, like, like that's like a word that means like a ghost. It's an old word for like a ghoul in gallon tanks. I didn't make this one up. I got this from my organic chemistry professor, Ed Paul, rest his soul. Okay? All altruists gloomily manufacture ghoul in gallon tanks. What's an altruist? That's somebody who's always trying to go out and go do good in the world, right? Well, all of them, I don't know why, but they gloomily, they're really sad about it. They gloomily manufacture this ghoul in gallon tanks. Allos, altros, glucose, manos, gulos, idos, galactose, talos. And you've got your mnemonic, you track of it. So if I asked you which Sugar. I'm just making this up. I'm just picking some weird places to throw my OHs. Which sugar is this? You would look at that and say, ah, okay, Dr. Huxford, we've got a aldo, one, two, three, four, five, six, an aldo hexose. All of these are pointing out toward this Fisher projection. I've got carbon two going that way, carbon three coming this way, carbon four coming this way, and carbon four. It's a D aldo hexose in its linear Fisher form. It's all altruists gloomily manufacture ghoul in gout. It's galactose. That is D galactose, Dr. Hutcher. And, and you can do that. You can also take this to the uh, Haworth projection. So here's our projection here. Uh, take your, your fingers, your galactose. If you want to turn this into a, a Pyrenees form uh, uh, D galactose, you would take your hand and turn that on its side. There's our carbon two. This will be coming down. There's our carbon three. That'll be coming up. 
There's our carbon-4 that'll be coming down, and our carbon-5 is the 